Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son, on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Woo, Messi, this is professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Wicker Man. Tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss Booking the Territory. Oh, yeah. This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Book in the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast. For today, talking NWA Saturday night on TBS, October the 22nd, 1988. Maybe we'll get some damn answers from last week's episode when they kept teasing us about something that happened to Sting, but they never showed us after a two-hour episode. With that said, Doc, how are you? Um, blessed. Blessed? Okay. That's it? That's I don't it. Know, man. Yeah, well, I got some other things I want to talk about, but... Like what? Well, first of all, uh, Harper, did you, if you do some voiceovers pretty soon for Wildcat, you need to remember this one. How do you teach a man to fall off a damn mall? <laughs> how you fu- how you teach a man to fall off the Disney store? <laughs> My <laughs> God, he's broken in half. Yeah, that was a big. Carry. That was a big. St- how, first of all, how you doing? I'm sure you're pretty. Have you been on Good Morning America <laughs> since? Your uh, boss's kid decided to jump off the mall. <laughs> oh, f- fucking Perry! The fuck? I gotta, I gotta assume most people know what we're talking about. But in case you don't, at a recent Wildcat show, PJ Hawks jumped off the second floor of the uh, Lakefront Mall. No, yeah. the Esplanade <laughs> Mall. <laughs> the Esplanade, bro. All right, Hopper. Um, Ke- you mean Hopper. Out Kenner? Yeah, Kenner, Kenner, bro. <laughs> Hopper. You got it. Okay, Hopper, tell the story like you told me when you called me the other day. When, because I'll set the stage, you were on commentary. Uh, take it from there. Okay, first of all, before the show started, I was getting some stuff out, out of my car, and, and Saeed was uh, with me. And he's like, Yeah, Perry stinks by jumping off the balcony. And I was like, He ain't jumping off that fucker. You, you fucker retarded. And he's like, No, nah, man. He, he was uh, practicing it. I was like, that's not going to happen. I think they just, you know, he's just being stupid. And I'm doing commentary, and I, I just see Perry run off, and he runs up the escalator. I'm like, oh, God, this is it. He's he's going to do it. And I'm just staying, because you know, I'm, like, behind it, like, underneath where he's standing. And I just see him fall out the fucking sky like a comet. And everyone goes fucking crazy. <laughs> and now you're on sport. And now you're on Sports Center. Then and that, then and that, this just in from Kenner, Louisiana. PJ Hawks just jumped off the balcony. Um, Hopper, tell the people <laughs> what you told me because what? you said you said when he when he tell the people what you told me when he was falling. What you mean? I don't no. remember. He don't remember. He was what like, I say. He was like, bruh, I look up and I see Perry and he's falling from the sky like a comet. Yeah, dude, I, he's just, he's falling like he fell out of a fucking airplane. Just Man, to, uh, let me tell you something. Goes. Let me tell you something. He jumps and then he flies for a while. And then dude. you realize how much further he has to go and you realize how far that is. It didn't it's, look that far. Like if you're standing like in a ring, I mean, you could do it. It's just when you standing up there and you looking down, you're like, "Fuck, man!" It was breathtaking how how far it was, to be honest. And he was, he was like a flying squirrel. <laughs> That's what he looked like. <laughs> hey, that's your boss's kid. Don't tell me. Hey, he did it perfectly because because when you he landed perfect and they caught him perfect, it could have been done better. So, I love the freaking Arab woman. She's like, no, no, don't, 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 no, no, no. You see her? 
needs sensitivity. He needs sensitivity training, Doc. <laughs> He needs sensitivity training. Doc, <laughs> Doc, did you hear? I was trying to not it's, be involved. It's in, it's, she's an, well, we don't know it, but Harper's trying to say she's an Arab. Not, A-Rab. not an Arab. Arab. God, A-Rab. Harper. What? <laughs> look, this is the shot where it looks like he's falling like is a look, comet. That's not that far. The hell it ain't. The hell it ain't. It's like jumping off a steel cage, dude. When you Harper. think about it, that's almost like doing a uh, the, uh, Jimmy Snuka steel cage deal. I, I, there's not that many people there, huh? They had about uh, oh, it, it's three, not a pat. Like if you look at the angle it has from about like three hundred, three to four. Watch that! Watch the angle because when you shoot down. Because the floor is all full, and there's okay. the floor underneath. Okay, all of that. Okay, it's just hard yeah. to tell because it's right, but 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 there's people like. Underneath all of that shit, too. Okay. Um, not my, not, so here's the thing. This is not my style of, of wrestling that I prefer, but you, I mean, that's gutsy. Good for y'all. Um, Sports Center retweeted it. That's got to be good for the promotion. Yeah. The mayor how, do you, it. how do you teach a man to fall off of a mall? How, how you teach a man to fall off the lids they still have lids they still have lids huh don't they don't you ask the arab lady with the thing on her head up the big, yeah no, 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 the, no, no, biggest, no, no, the biggest thing jesus the you're thing, an asshole <laughs> the best thing that i learned out of this is that there's still malls open yeah and what's crazy is they got one of them little dipping dots uh things the little stands and a woman is like this is the most most money i made in one day, it that didn't I made all fucking year. Jesus Christ! I, I said, "Well, you're welcome, lady. You can thank Perry's goofy ass." There he goes. Hubbard, course, talk about the kid on the floor. Oh yeah, we well, watch, watch. Here he comes, the little kid break dancing. Watch on the left. On, it's on the left. Watch. Hopper went nuts. He called me. He's laughing. Hello. Really <laughs> night. Look at him. What you can barely see account? him. You can barely see him, but he's over to the left on the floor. Break. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all doing down there? I don't know, man. It's in what the water, it? huh? Well, they, uh, <laughs> there he goes. He's like a cockroach that's been sprayed with fucking raid. <laughs> oh, come on. I think I think this was insane for Perry to do that, but. I know less, much less talented individuals who've basically gotten spots on national television for doing worse things. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about it. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You know, there's well, a certain pick pads, right? You know, safety first. Well, I mean, like there's a certain AEW wrestler who did something ten times worse than this, who's on national TV now. I don't want to badmouth the dude. I'm just saying, uh, he's not very entertaining to me, but. Whatever. That's it's nice. not my cup of tea. No, I'm just saying. It's it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not trying to bad mouth him. It's just for me as a viewer, I don't like watching him wrestle. I don't think well, he's the thing that is, great. no one there no one there thought that was gonna happen. And Hell no. A, that that's a genuine reaction to what they that, just saw. That that was a certain genuine reaction, no doubt. <laughs> look look at that is. woman. Don't jump, don't 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 do there it. She goes, no, 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 don't, 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 Come don't. on, hey, Harper. Hey, hey. Hey. Jesus Christ, grow up. We're trying All to right. we're trying to grow our footprint, digital footprint in the oh, Middle East. Yeah. Oh yeah. By oh, rain so like, and rain and Yemen and Qatar. Like the, so we're Harper, like the what, Erics. what do you yeah. do when what do you do you do that in front of Saeed? Do you make those stupid sounds like God, oh, you don't know what I tell Saeed. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm asking. One of my favorite Saeed moments. We used to go to TJR, was it TGI Fridays after the show? Then we'll eat. And I'm eating his French fries. He's he's a Palestinian. And he's like, Stop eating my French fries. I said, Bruh, I'm like Israel. I could take whatever I want from you. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it, motherfucker. He's like, Fuck you, Harper. Fuck you, Harper. Fuck an asshole. <laughs> Let me let me be clear. Saeed is the a referee for Wildcat yeah. that is friends with Harper, and that's how Harper talked to his Palestinian friends. Um, 
I like Sai. Notice, Sai's a good person. Notice he doesn't talk to his white and black friends that way like us. That's nice. That's nice. All right, Doc, you got anything else as we keep talking about um, Perry coming off the balcony or second story in the Esplanade Mall in New Orleans? Well, well Kenna, I do Kenna. have one quick other thing because I don't have any shout-outs this week. It's been a busy week. Um, so, um, can we get an over-under on how long Vince has in the football business? That's a good question. I don't know because, I mean, because I remember last last year that, that Alliance – Football league started hot, and then it th- three three weeks later, grand opening, grand closing. Mm. Every yeah, it lasted, s- it lasted seven weeks last year. Yeah, this, I didn't see anything that was that much better than that last weekend. You didn't now, watch it. What are you talking about? You've been texting me all weekend talking about you didn't see none of it. What are you talking about? He's full of crap. He texted me all weekend. I ain't seen none of it. I didn't you see didn't none watch of the it. Renegades? No. He didn't no? see none of it. Hey, Doc, I, watched, I gotta, I gotta see I if my wife's about, gonna um give me the ticket. She actually won tickets for work for a game. Let's go, me and you. Um, and they play in in that Rice Stadium. What? They. The he's team getting in Houston. Houston. He's get, okay. Oh. He's about to say he's getting Houston. Dallas confused. Yeah, the and Houston I'm thinking, team. I didn't realize how big that damn stadium Rice plays in. It holds 70,000 fucking people. Lance knew that. That's a fucking NFL-sized stadium for Rice. Are we sure they play at where Rice plays, or is it where Houston plays? No, it's fucking Rice. Rice. Okay. It's so here's Rice. the thing. Harper, what did you think about the football product that you saw? I honestly didn't see any of it. I, mean, I saw stuff right. on like SportsCenter because... The fuck with Saturday I was working and Sunday I was Recaps. watching Perry fall like a like a kamikaze <laughs> pilot. What day were you eating ass? Um, what time is it? Right. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, this is the people who tweet me stuff about how juvenile we are and how terrible oh, we yeah. are. Oh yeah, that- someone hit me. There's one of the guys, uh, Darren. He's he's been knowing Luke forever, and he listens to the podcast. He's like, "Bro, your podcast popped up on my on my list of podcasts. The fuck is wrong with y'all, bro? I can't listen to that shit." You know what you tell him? Well, you know what you tell that guy? (laughs) My podcast popped up on your feed, but nothing you've ever done has popped up (laughs) on my asshole. That's right. (laughs) He's like, I try to watch this. I tried to watch the uh, Mid-Atlantic one, but I thought that shit was horrible. Oh, okay, Darren. Yeah. So, here's what's going to happen. The, the, the great stuff. part about America is you just can move on to another podcast. No, no right. harm, no foul. There's a million of them. See you we later, love buddy. you, Darren. I don't even thoughts know who that pray- is. Wait, thoughts and prayers, dog. Thoughts, thoughts and prayers, prayers dog. dog. All right, go ahead, Doc. What you got? So... One thing I did here is that Vince is going to run out of money, but he's going to make a valuable contribution to changing the kickoffs in the NFL. Okay, you asked a question. Hold on. The kickoff thing is fine. I told you, the game Saturday, I watched them. Uh, they were pretty much pretty competitive. Uh, the second one wasn't as much as the first one, but they were good games. Like The football quality was good. Sunday was a whole nother story. Really wasn't good. The biggest problem they have, as with any startup has, especially with football, if you think the WWE has a lock on the pro wrestling market as far as a brand, the NFL has a lock on Damn. football. Lockdown. Uncle Raj is booking the freaking territory. The NFL doesn't need a feeder system because they have this thing called the NCAA. Yeah. So for you to crack into that, genre to me is even more of a task of someone to crack in to pro wrestling it's just i just don't have faith because i've seen it we've seen it too many times the world league of american football the usfl uh we've seen when world league of american football became nfl europe which they even worked with the nfl and still it ended up going away we've seen the aaf if you want to count arena there's just it XFL the first one. It's just it's hard to crack that nut. It's not like cranking one off. It ain't that easy, bro. Yeah, for real. That's my problem with it. I thought it was actually good on Saturday, but 
I just I don't see how they I don't see how they last long term. Now I think they said something like you've got a three year commitment to it. What I I actually hope they succeed, but yeah. I just don't I don't know how man. It's just that's a that's tough man. Yeah. And they need to move. I told this to Doc. They need to move it back a month. Like they need to start mid March. You know why they don't? You know why they don't? Because of Romania, what? The tournament. College the basketball. Tournament. That that's only no that no, I ain't buying that. I'm not buying that. Move it back a month. Look, it's it's the beginning of February. You know what I don't miss right now, Doc? And I am a bigger football fan than I am a wrestling fan. You know what I don't miss right now? I do not miss NFL and college football. I'm glad it's over. By the time July comes around, I'll be a, like a, like a crackhead fiending for it. But right now, I don't miss it. They got to move it back a month. At least give three, four weeks for us to miss it. I, you just I, jump yeah. right into it. I told you what they needed to do, bruh. Thoughts and prayers, dog. They needed to have some closed exhibition games to work out the kinks. Because the first week of the NFL is usually slow, too. But it's the NFL. They needed to be in week two mode with XFL all week one. I don't know, bro. So what do y'all think about the... The three-point conversion. I think it's when you try to stick all three of your fingers. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's what Hopper's, that's what Luke's friend Darren don't like about this. Yeah, see? All right, well, let's let's change the entire direction of the show after five years for Darren. Yeah. Hi, hi Darren. Hey, Pry, we're going to talk yeah. about, we're going to talk about a 401ks now, bruh. <laughs> Make sure we have a diversified portfolio and shit. I think I think I think I know who Darren is because <laughs> I don't know if I've met him, but <laughs> yeah, maybe we're gonna talk about He's how to get right. a better better a uh, a lift session at the gym. Uh, Darren ain't really a lift guy, is he, Hopper? No, he's fat. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, then let's talk about fucking eating ho hos and shit. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. You don't even know the dude. Leave Darren alone. He's a good guy. It three, just our three our three humor just doesn't work three for point him. conversion is when you grab your girl like a bowling ball, right? Okay. How about we? But you know what the... Darren does have? What? He's got a room in his house, just like a forty year old virgin with all the fucking action figures. Oh, so I'm gonna take advice from that guy. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> all right, Doc. Any other shout outs? To start i'm mad at everybody tonight you're mad at everybody all right twitter get... sucks fat <laughs> motherfuckers suck everybody's the minor league football okay uh let's get started before we do so shout out to disrespectfully classy marky blassy kyle riley mike childry for your generous patronage each and every month we appreciate it and doc you're sure you don't have any other shout outs before i hit this start on the patreon video are you trying to get me to shout something out that are you trying to send me a message that i'm not getting because i have no. nothing yeah well you uh, what? No, no, I don't. I don't have nothing. I was just double checking. I was just double checking. All right, so we'll get rolling. We are October twenty second, nineteen eighty eight. They teased us all last week about what happened to Sting. So they opened this show. We see Sting being carried out of the ring on a stretcher. We then head to the studio, and Tony and David say we will hear from Dusty and the Road Warriors and get their side of things this week. So more teasing as we just see Sting laying in the ring. Uh, Tony then says, let's go to the uh, to the tape of Sting and the Road Warriors versus the Varsity Club for the six-man titles. And we are told in this first match that they air on this week that Dusty got a waiver from the NWA office because he was doing community outreach like Doc claims to do sometimes. Man, that was... And- that unlike me. me, unlike me, that's a flimsy excuse. <laughs> that's a that's a hell of an excuse to not be on your job that night. But Doc, any thoughts from the open right there? No. Okay. Hopper, you? Uh uh-uh. uh. All right. So, Doc, I'll throw it to you first. We get into this match with um the varsity club versus the Row Warriors and Sting. Now, it's important to note. This is, I'm assuming, the six-man title match. And Sting is standing in for Dusty because he's doing community outreach, whatever the hell that means, uh, in wrestling in 1988. Doc, I'm going to get your thoughts on this and the whatever you got, whatever notes you have. Yeah. Um, the first thing I thought, because this goes on a while, 
which is long fine. Time. Um, huh? Long time. Yeah, well, but I mean, if you think about it, it's main event quality for our purposes here on a Saturday night. So I'm good with that. Um, when was the last time we had seen the Road Warriors sell? They did. They have, that's the one thing that I really noticed. Fucking Rick Steiner was throwing them around. We have never seen – that's what's interesting here is we've never seen them in this fa- – I mean, I'm not saying they didn't do it at, at house shows or other places, but we've only seen straight-up ass whoopings. I agree. Harper, what would you think? Same thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, Animal took the heat in this match, mm-hmm. like the whole thing. I mean, mm-hmm. from what we saw, you know, all of what we saw. Animal's like – Taking the heat and yeah, I mean most of it. The the other thing is uh, to point out, and this will make sense once we get to the finish that I'm gonna play in a little bit. Uh, they never tag Sting in, and <laughs> nope, they're freezing him out. Yeah, they're and freezing the him out. And the crowd is cheering for it. What well, right? Because what do you do if you want the crowd to want something? You don't give it to them. You yeah. show the. They're just chanting the whole time. We want Sting. We want Sting. We want Sting. Is that, is that why we don't get good wrestling on? <laughs> that's nice what you know what I'm talking what? about what? nothing okay. so I thought that the first five minutes of this episode was better than the entire episode last week oh hell yes. the first five I'll give it the first oh, 15 yeah. alright then play I mean well you know we gotta remind everyone we didn't rate this thing good at all last week oh no yeah I agree. I thought this was excellent. I thought the the, the first the, this first match was was fantastic. Uh, they even break in the middle of it and they go to t- Tony and Jr. in the studio and and Tony and Jr. talk about Ellering's strategy and it seems strange that uh, although it was a great match, it, they're, they're mentioning like okay, Ellering may have wanted them to do this or not do this or do that, uh, but they say it's a good match. You know, the, even though Sting it hasn't gotten tagged in yet, and Animal is just taking the heat throughout the whole thing. So, Doc, before I go to the close, you got anything else or, or the finish from the match? You got anything else? This is uh, this is gonna be interesting when we get to the finish. All right. So, with that said. Here's the the start of things that lead to the finish of this match. Here it is. Television champion. Big right hand by Rotunda. There goes Animal for the ride. Rotunda! Animal has a double one. But I think the Animal caught him with a tremendous close on there, Bob. Right in the jaw. He makes the tag. Here comes Hawk. Here comes Hawk. All three of the varsity club on the ring. Hawk's going to occur. In comes the spin. All right, stopped it there. Luger came in to try to help, but then they jumped on Luger too. Doc, your thoughts? 
I think it's really easy to underestimate how big this really is. This is huge. This is huge. And we've known it's coming, so and it's thirty years old, so it's like, eh. This was big, man. I man, when when JR said, What are the Road Warriors doing? Have they lost their sanity? And then Luger acted like he got shot when he got hit. What I want to know is why. Yeah, because there's Mike? always a reason. Why, Mike? I don't know. Are you asking no. me or you just want to find out later in the show? Uh, um, I think we're gonna find out later, I think. Um I was just thinking at this point, for turning on Sting, there's just not enough Rolexes in the world for me to hand out to the Road Warriors for whooping his ass. Wow. That's nice. What? (laughs) He found Jesus. Later, but at this point, this was him getting nailed to his cross to die for his sins. (laughs) This is a religious free podcast, Doc. Can we stop with that? What can I talk about? I don't know. I mean, Harper's a good crash Christian boy from Metairie, That's, so you're right. I'm Catholic. Yeah, he doesn't do such things. Oh God. Anyway, okay. Is the Dallas Harper, gym still there? Uh, I have no what? idea. <laughs> it's a good question, uh, Harper. What did you think from all that? I, I just fuck, man. This crowd saw something that they never seen before. And they saw their hero get destroyed by the Road Boy, Warriors. Did he? Oh my God! That 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 what you call it off the top rope that they their finisher when yeah. Hawk throws that close. Oh my God! Did you see Sting flip over? He, oh. When he flipped, that was a hell of a visual right there. God. Everybody, everybody in the building saw that. Yeah, bro, he went. I mean, he flew. It was like. Somebody threw a rag doll in the air and just f- it went flipping. Like remember Jimmy Del Rey with the <laughs> with the stuffed animals? That's what Sting looked like the way he went flying <laughs> backwards. Come on, that's what he looked like. You know I ain't lying. Are you going to tell the people the big Smoky Mountain surprise yet? No, 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 not yet. That's I'll a big one, on. though, man. And let me tell you, we talked about it last week being a surprise, but let me tell you, it's good. I think it was very good. I agree. I think we found a we we found a potential replacement for Harper. Yeah. Wait, On the Smoky what? Mountain show, it's not like we had a choice. <laughs> the shoot job was calling him, brother. He yeah. couldn't do it no I, more. I, I, I kind of meant for everything. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not happening. I'm not going to let you do that to Harper. No. I would. I was just carrying out the plan that you set forward oh, earlier. Oh bullshit! Today. It's nice. I know. Let's go now to Dusty Rhodes, who's got something to say after he's finally here after his community Wait. outreach. Hey. Uh, all right. What? what? You, no, go ahead. What you got? Listen to what a fan yells out right before he, he starts talking. Oh, okay. All right. So let's Don't pick quiet. up on that. I, I didn't have a note, so now I'm, li- right. I'm going to listen. Right when he first starts okay. talking? Yeah. It's like right okay. when he comes out. All right. So let's listen. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, what possessed the Road Warriors to do what they did to Sting? There's only one man that can tell us that, and that's part of the world six-man tag team champions, Dusty Rhodes. And Dusty, thank you very much for coming out here and consenting to do the statement for us. I think the thing that we have to address right now is that this is the greatest country in the world. People can live in this country and dream a dream and be whatever they want to be. Wait, wait. I got a boss in. Harper, what did that kid yell? Because I the think I heard big, it. Big fat whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's listen again this time around and see if we can hear it better. Here it is. You can tell us that, and that's part of the world six man tag team champions, Dusty Rhodes. And Dusty, thank you very much for coming out here and consenting to do the statement for us. I think the thing that we have to address right now is that this is the greatest country in the world. People can live in this country and dream a dream and be whatever they want to be. But I think when somebody cuts another person's throat like the road wires did the sting, then that ain't good business, baby. Now, road warriors, I have lived with you. I have run with you. We have ate together. We have defended the world six-man title. And on a time in my life, when I took time out for the middle retarded children around this country and Sting stepped in in my place, you took it upon yourself to show how bad you are. But how bad are you? How bad are you, brother? 
Never in a free country gives you that opportunity to do what you want to do and say what you want to say and feel what you want to feel. But it does not give you the opportunity or does not give you the right to turn on another human being, no matter how he is, what race, creed, or color, and demise him in front of the national public. So you got to face one fact. And that fact is that Steve trained his heart out to be U.S. Heavyweight Champion. Luger has devoted his life to being World's Heavyweight Champion. Now, throw them in a bond together. Now then, facing what you want to face, making your bed, lying in your bed, Road Warriors. You come now out here and say that you are bad and we dine on death, we snack on danger. Brother, you are both backstabbing yellow dogs and you ain't bad. You ain't bad. What's gonna be bad is now Luger Sting to deal with you. But one thing you got to remember around this country, now then, Road Warriors, you gotta deal with Dusty Rose, the American Dream. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from the American Dream, Dusty Rose. Now let's go to the ring and Ron Simmons. Wow. Boy, the fans just giving it in blues. But, Doc, you want to go first? I don't, I, I don't understand. Or, you don't understand what? I mean, he's mad about it, but we still don't really know why. Yeah, what's the, yeah, no one asks why. Why asks why? Dusty, yeah, why asks why? why Dusty, drink why do you think dry. that? Yeah, drink Bud Dry. Drink Bud Ice. Oh, come uh, on. Why did this happen? I mean, why is his head so, why is his forehead so purple? Look like a bruised um, pussy sitting out there on his screen. Come on. <laughs> Mike, get, get control over this. This Hold is back. why, this is why Luke's friend Darren doesn't want to listen to us. <laughs> right, but, but why thousands of others are thoroughly entertained. Go back and look at Dusty on that. His fucking head looked like a beat up fucking ham wallet. <laughs> Jesus! It looks like it looks like sliced roast beef. Yeah, Damn, like, it does, huh? It looks like a fucking punctured pussy. That's nice. <laughs> it it looks like a... Either that, or it looks like your fingers when you were in the bathtub too long when you were a kid. <laughs> Hopper, what, what were you about to say, Hopper? It looks like the surface of, of like, Jupiter or something. <laughs> Jupiter is a gas planet. It doesn't quite have what a surface. One on Mars or whatever, where they got the, the fucking canyons and shit. <laughs> that might be Mercury or, or Venus. Yeah, whatever. Or the moon, maybe. Moon, moon doesn't maybe. have an atmosphere. Anyway. Listen, listen Arthur, oh. we're over here on a show with Neil deGrasse Tyson over here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that guy. I think he's uh, I think he's pretty funny. He's an yeah. Afrophysicist, right? <laughs> Astro, you dumbass. <laughs> he's he, an no, he, Afrophysicist. Like he was on. He was on Joe Rogan a, a while back, man, and it was it was pretty interesting. He's 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 kind of funny, man. He's he's a little weird too, but you know you don't you can't be that smart and not be a little quirky and weird. At the Tell same me time. about it. I know. Okay. Uh, God. God, Dusty's <laughs> Doc said his head looked like a sliced up ham wallet. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> a ham wallet. <laughs> See, that's why we can't. That's why people like Darren Hopper's friend don't listen to us. Cause that <laughs> Hopper, can you imagine? I've never really talked met Darren, but can you imagine him listening? He's turning it in, and he hears Doc going off on something or you. He's like, oh, what the hell, man? What are these, what's wrong with these guys? You yeah, fuck's wrong with y'all? We all fucking 13 years old? Maybe he should stop worrying about what we're doing and get a hold of his own life and stop the pre-diabetes from coursing through him. Yeah, straighten up. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, oh Hubbard, yeah, did, you have any, did you have anything else from Dusty? I didn't even ask. How'd y'all you. like his uh, learning his uh, learning the ropes fucking jacket? Jesus Christ! That's a TV show, huh? Yeah, the, yeah. He had his own his own jacket. He sure did. Yeah. Look at it, learning the ropes. It's got his name on it, stitched into it too. Yeah. So that nobody takes it. Holy next, shit! Next, next he's gonna be on Small Wonder. Remember that show? Oh my you? God! <laughs> Jeez. 
these uh, that show comes on like on an antenna TV or one of those channels, and I see it on. I'm like, who the fuck sat in some boardroom and was like, hey, okay, we need a TV show. We're going to call it Small Wonder, and this little girl's going to be a fucking robot. I mean, who the fuck thinks up that dumb shit? Yeah, what you need is another Golden Girls where you got a bunch of old sluts running around. Yeah, Doc, well. Doc, do you want to answer his question about who thinks up that stuff? Uh, the when Booker corpor- Man. When it comes to corporations? It, it yeah. It's worse. It's like, who signs off on it? It's just, yeah, that's a great idea, Joe. Somebody who <laughs> thinks that they can get their quarterly bonus by signing off on it. Yeah. I'd, I'd say people that wipe spots off of cars and never mind. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> That's inside baseball, man. I know, I know. It's too much. All right. Let's keep moving. Uh, a couple of things happen here, and then we're, we're going to move right along to the next promo. We got Ron Simmons defeats Keith Steinborn. Harper Jimmy. Keith, Stein- Keith Steinborn's bullet is an affront to society. That thing wow. needs its own fucking uh, ring entrance. God. That is awful. Look at that thing. The guy walks around looking like that. Even for 1988, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> I, bet, <laughs> I bet, I bet he strutted around with that shit in his shoot life. Oh yeah, bro. He's like, Harper, check this I'm a, out. I'm a rest. They're gonna have me beat Ric Flair one day. Yeah, Papa, how's bro. that guy dress when he goes to a wedding? Him? Yeah, Steinborn with that. He long wears hair. the old school fucking. I don't know. Probably. He, he'll probably dress like a pimp from like the Rockford Files or something. Here's the thing: his look is so ridiculous. He would actually look worse in a real suit than he would in whatever else he's going to wear. Yeah, that's true it's, too. Look at this guy. All right, so Fucking we move on from him. Special listening, motherfucker. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we move on from him. To the Russian Assassins, one and two, they defeat Rick Allen and Jerry Price. They once again win with a loaded mask. I've got nothing those two from... guys. Those two guys are the wrestling equivalent of Nikita's promos, man. F F. Okay, that's not. I mean, that's insulting the two guys that are under the mask, though. That's uh, well, they're both dead, aren't they? No, they're not. One of them is. So that makes it all right for you just to go, they're both dead, what's it matter? You're an asshole, you know that? That's you see, you up. think it's worse to disparage somebody who's dead, but I say at least they can't come try to kick your ass. So, all right. Wow. Uh, you're a class act to say that about a dead man, just so you know. It's not because he's dead, he just happens to be dead. All right. Now, watching well, him when he was alive was, never mind. Paul Jones, uh, after these two win, uh, using the loaded mask against the enhancement talent, cuts a promo. I got nothing from it, Doc, do you? Why do they need a, a loaded mask to beat these two shitheads? We've been talking about this for weeks. It's a flaw. <laughs> but, you know, just remember, everybody back then was taking care of the business. Actually, I understand. I understand the psychology of that. No, you don't. No, you well, don't. I, no, let me explain it to you. They are oh, Dave, heels. Dave Meltzer, come on. No, no, no. Uh, no, please do not insult me like that. <laughs> they're heels. One. Two, they're so stupid as heels that they like go, oh, we got to beat these guys by cheating. How come other heels don't cheat then? Thank you. Because well, other, you know, other heels aren't as good. When they have to. Look, I'm just saying. That's when a heel cheats. They cheat when they have to. Hopper, they're they dumb. Just, they don't they're do dumb it Russians. Different. Okay. All right. I'm not going to argue with you about these two dudes that, that literally got thrown into a spot because, <laughs> because the warlord and the barbarian decided to go get paid by Vince. Uh, so that's that. Do they uh, leave to go get paid? No, huh? Do the, do, does who leave to go get paid? These two. No, I don't even remember how. I don't even remember how this ends. It's been they that long. Tapes. <laughs> it can't. Have, it can't have too much luck, or can it? I don't think so. I don't think so either. But it's terrible. Gosh, they just it's... look like fucking gimps, huh? They do. <laughs> like the guy from Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
You seen that part, Mike? I have. What'd you oh, think I of hate that? that. It's terrible, man. It's just so you were terrible. Like, yeah, I guarantee you, Michael's watching that. Was like, man, white people are fucked up. No. <laughs> it's like white people are messed up. Oh my Look god! At. You're like communist uh, gimps. <laughs> and Paul, jo- Paul Jones is here getting purple. Talking <laughs> with them behind. <laughs> He's turning. Look at him. He's turning purple. Uh, I have nothing from the promo though, Doc. Do you? Look, look at Paul no, Jones. I didn't yeah. listen to it. So. I did it. It wasn't horrible. It's just he's talking about Ivan and the problem. There's a lot of problems with it, but he looks like some asshole from like Cannonball Run or something, doesn't he? <laughs> That's exactly what he looks like <laughs> with that hat and everything. Yes. Okay. Let's go to Jim Cornette. He's going to introduce the Midnight Express, but it's real short. He's going to tell Crockett something. We got to play it. Here it is. The World Tag Team Champions of the Midnight Express. And their manager, dressed in red and blue and green and yellow, is Jim Cornette. At least we know you've got light and color perception. Now we'll worry about a sanity check later on. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the undisputed tag team champions of the world and a couple of great guys in their own right. Beautiful Bobby and Sweet Stan, the Midnight Express. Well, he tells Crockett that uh, it's good to see. He can see colors. Maybe next time he'll have a sanity check. Doc? Uh, any thoughts? Because I got a, I got a sound bite to play from 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 Jim here on commentary. That's pretty good too. Yeah, I have a weird question for you. Mm-hmm. Think about this before you answer. Are the Midnight's a better arena, far better arena act than the studio? I don't really differentiate them, but I don't yeah. know what you're trying to get at. I started thinking about this. It's like the, the studio is too small for their act because Corny's got a big act. Bobby likes to fly. Stan likes to wiggle for more ladies. And they had that long walk in the arena with the music going. Tum, 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 oh. They needed that long walk. They needed to be in a big building. Well, yeah, don't get me wrong. The music, one of the best entrance musics of all time. I would say and the best. Cor- and corn, yeah, I mean that's that's some that works well in a big building. It you can really get into it. Hopper, uh, you got any thoughts on what Doc said? Yeah, I mean I can see where he, what he's talking about. Like I really liked Ron Garvin in the studio because that shit was locked in and you could see the pain. Like Ron Garvin may be better in a studio than the arena, but I think it's the exact opposite for the Midnight's, maybe more than anybody else. I don't know, man. If you're sitting at home watching Ron Garvin, whether it's the camera in the studio or the camera in the arena, you hear them chops even if the camera's 20 feet away. Okay. But I hear you. I know what you're coming from with the Midnight. Yeah. 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 All right. Midnight Express take on Mike Jackson and Terry Jones. They beat him. Listen to what Cornette says on commentary about Paul Jones and Gary Hart. This is ridiculous. Here it is. This yeah. Monday, it's all going to happen. Speaking of inquiring minds, I come over here to find you two. Paul Jones was out here talking about what's fresh on his mind. What's fresh on Paul Jones's mind would make good fertilizer. Let me tell you something. He's the only guy I know that buys his clothes secondhand from Lauren Green. But I got to tell you about Gary Hart. A lot of things going on in professional wrestling. Gary Hart says he's got a big, black, evil surprise for us. I, I guess his mother-in-law is coming to pay him a little visit. Don't worry, uh, boys, they've been taking in too much caffeine. All the other tags. <laughs> that's nice Harper any other thoughts he got that's fired nice. he got fired for less in 2020 yeah that's foul man <laughs> damn why's he gotta go off on Gary Hart's mother-in-law she's a big old black mean woman god damn okay, doesn't, Gary Hart, pe- doesn't Gary Hart seem like the kind of guy who would have a black Yes. Significant other. Yeah. I, I, I would be surprised. Um, Let me remind everyone, Gary Hart talked about last week he had a big black surprise coming. So that's... What is that? <laughs> what <laughs> is ever, that? Like you, ever tell a, you, ever, you ever tell a broad you had a, she had a big black surprise coming, Mike? <laughs> no. I bet, I bet, I bet you all you has. Oh. What? Harper, you, you ever tell a broad that? I got a big old black surprise coming for your ass, girl. 
<laughs> Darren, Darren just cut this week's episode <laughs> off because <laughs> we were acting like we were 12. <laughs> Got a big black surprise. <laughs> That's oh. nice. Harper, you ever told a broad that or no? No. Okay. I'm not black. Okay. Have you ever told a chick that? <laughs> According to Doc, I don't know, but we'll see. You, you um, never done that like, like a, a fucking she she's? <laughs> oh, I think you need to remind people about she she's. <laughs> mm, I drive by there about two or three times a, uh, a week, and I was like, yeah. I'm going to take a picture of it. And I was like, I'm not even going to fucking pull up in a goddamn parking lot. <laughs> Harper, I'm going to take you there the next time I'm in New Orleans. Hey, you know what's go. funny? They got the little the fucking Asian masha- uh, massage parlor is right next door. <laughs> I told you the story of that before. Yeah. You don't remember? Yeah. Let's just say somebody I know walked in there and was like, how much? And <laughs> the little Asian lady was like, uh, $20 for this? <laughs> she brought- she pointed pulled out, at her, like a menu. She pointed <laughs> at her mouth. She pointed at her mouth. Twenty dollars for this. Hundred dollars for this. Oh, uh, Doc, you all right over there? Y'all are in severe need of some help. What are we? Twelve? Darren tuned out again just now. I'm starting to want to hang out with Darren instead of you guys. <laughs> All right, Cornets and Midnight Express win. Doc, do you have anything from Dick Murdoch's promo after Cornets? I night? have Stan just then wiggling his ass off in the ring at the end that you might want to run back and let us see. Boy, was he. <laughs> yeah, get that. Give it to commentary, Doc. Here uh, it comes. Well, we're over at the row. Look at there. We've got his belt, and now Stan mm. is those hips like every good white boy. Mm. From dusk to dawn, whatever turns you on, baby. Good Christian athlete, right there. That's right. <laughs> Wayward girls. Doc, any? Did you want to? Do you have anything from uh, Dick Murdoch's promo? Um. Yeah. Look at that. Um. Look at that hat he's wearing. That's the same thing that I said. What the hell was Harper's that hat? Big on this. The fuck, uh, Harper! <laughs> I'm gonna play it. it. I'm gonna play it. It'll give you a chance to look at the hat better. Here it is. All right, the one and only Dirty Dick Murdoch. Dick, welcome. Well, thank you, David Crockett. You know, first of all, I want to get out here and I want to state one thing to Mr. Jim Ross. You know, every time I'm up there wrestling, he's got a mouth off and talk about a football score. Well, anytime Ross wants me one on one, that's old boy from Texas will sure embarrass that transplant Oklahoma, and I'll guarantee you that. Now, let's get something else straight. You know, you got people standing up here. It doesn't matter whether you're in rodeoing, whether you're in ice hockey, whether you're a basketball player, whether you're a baseball player, whether you play football or an auto driver. Whenever you take up that profession, you got to expect injuries. You don't hear Mr. Allison crying when he had that wreck because he was out of racing. You don't hear some of them bull riders crying when they get banged up. You don't hear Wayne Gretzky crying when he gets knocked down. You don't hear any football players complaining. They expect it. It's in the game. Well, Sting, when you put your name on the dotted line, buddy, you're taking your life in your own hands. Now, it wasn't right what happened to you, but I'm not going to sit up here and condone it or take sides. But this is professional wrestling. Now, let's get one thing straight. The Road Warriors are two of the biggest, meanest, nastiest, filthiest, slimiest individuals in the world today. And the only one that's a little bit devious, the one that's a little bit dirtier, a little bit nastier in the whole world is Dick Murdoch. Now, Road Warriors, I have never backed down from any individual in the world today. I ain't a man alive that I'm afraid of. Now, he might whip me. It takes a good amount of twitting, but don't take it long. But let me say one thing. A few weeks ago, Dusty Rhodes and Dick Murdoch shook hands and reformed the original Texas Outlaws. And I'll guarantee you what, David, we're a team to be reckoned with. We're with the NWA, and it's a heck of a battle. And I know there's going to be big battles coming along. The Road Warriors, Sting, and whoever it is, but I heard Ric Flair state one thing. And whatever you say about Ric Flair, the man is the world's heavyweight wrestling champion. I saw Ric Flair since he started wrestling. He's a, a great asset to the world of professional wrestling, probably the greatest asset there is. And when Ric Flair said that they're going to join sides with the Road Warriors and Barry Windham, that's an awesome foursome, David. And it's going to be a heck of a combination to beat. But Ric Flair, remember this, sir. As you're set out there, styling and profiling, as only Ric Flair can do, that this old Texas boy right here, he's coming to fight. And I'll guarantee you what. I'll stick old Big Bertha right on the end of your hunker. 
All right. Thank you, Dick Murdoch. Now let's go to the transplant. Jim Ross. Uh, Harper, did you Google to figure out what that hat was while it was playing? It's a gator ropers. It must be a bar, a fucking a nightclub or something, huh? Could be uh, some sort of rodeo related. Yeah, it's gotta product. be one of those like Man, a Gilly type of thing. He's a hillbilly. How real is that motherfucker? Very real. Yeah, he's too fucking real. That didn't sound like a baby face promo though. Uh uh-uh. uh. He's like Sting. You sign the fucking dial on. This is pro wrestling. Yeah, it ain't a baby face promo. <laughs> That's for damn sure. But, you know, it is what it is. I thought it was good, but it definitely, I mean, yeah, he ain't a baby face. I, I, but, I, you know, with Murdoch, he comes and goes, and you just never know with him, right? So that's, that's no, kind of where I am. You have no idea what the fuck you're getting. Bro, he is NASCAR and rodeo and beer and broads. I mean, pickup truck with his dog in the back, and yeah. All right, let's how, go. To how, many guys, how many guys live around here like that, Mike? God. In Texas? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about the NASCAR part. Well, I don't know. A lot, but maybe minus the NASCAR. But no, and again, ago. we got that stupid track here, too. I say stupid. That some bitch is big. That thing's huge. Um, We got that track here, so maybe so. We, I'm just, I just don't see a lot of people with the NASCAR. Like, I remember, I remember 10 years ago, you'd see a lot more NASCAR paraphernalia than, than you do now. Do we have because Dan, fucking Dale Earnhardt died. Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? I don't know. Ben Martin, you're a NASCAR fan out there, and you're, you're a patron. You listen to us all the time. Ben, is NASCAR like uh, going? Like, is it? Is it? Are there, there's not enough fans anymore? Or I don't know. I I, I really don't it's know. I just, died, something bro. must I'm have happened you. to the sport because there's plenty of rednecks out there. Okay. But uh, let's keep going. Uh, speaking of rednecks, Oliver Humperdink is not one. <laughs> He's the porn photographer uh, that's taking pictures and um, I. I, I Humperdink is about that life, and I got to listen to him here because he's a good promo. Here it is. Well, thank you very much, David Crockett. And ladies and gentlemen, Sir Oliver Humperdink has made a statement that 396 pound Bam Bam Bigelow is here in the NWA not to make friends, but to win championships. And that's what we're here to address right here. There's a lot of people now that have heard your statement about the challenge to Ric Flair. We've heard Ric Flair's comments. What are your thoughts now, now that you've, you've laid that challenge out for about a week or Let so? Let me just say one thing. College football aside, everything else aside, welcome back to the jungle, brother. And there's a beast roaming that jungle called Bam Bam Bigelow, who weighs 396 pounds and is the baddest cat around. And Ric Flair, Mr. Big Stuff, as you like to refer to yourself. As far as I'm concerned, Big Stuff is an Oreo cookie that's overblown. So, Mr. Big Stuff, all you got to do to prove it to everybody in the entire world is put your name on a contract, step into the ring with the beast from the east, and when it's all over and settled, we'll see if you're Mr. Big Stuff then. I think you're going to be Mr. Little Stuff then, Ric Flair, because you're going to have about 20 pounds of gold that's missing from your possession, and it's going to be Bam Bam's. I've made him a promise. I told him I'd take him to the top, and if it's the last thing I do, Ric Flair, you're on the list, you're on the list big time, brother. No matter what happens to the road warriors of this guy or this guy, I've got one objective, and that's to make my man the world's heavyweight champion. And I will do that, I will succeed. I've done it before in the past, and I'll do it again right now. He's coming, he's coming breathing fire, Ric Flair, and that fire is gonna be directed at that bleach blonde head of yours. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's go to the ring and see the Koloffs in action. I like Humperdinck. Hopper, what do you have from this? Yeah, I, I don't mind him. He's definitely better than Paul Jones. He's good. He told Rick yeah. Flair, stop talking. You know, if you're big stuff, put your name on the contract. That's what I Has want to see. Has fucking Flair come out in this episode? Uh, we don't get Flair okay. in this one, I don't think. Um, I was looking at my notes over real quick because I couldn't quite remember. Uh, No, no Flair this week, so... Uh, but Humberding's good there, Doc. What do you have? I didn't think it was his best, but I liked it. If yeah. That makes, if that makes sense, it wasn't the best promo he's even cut since he's been here. But he's enjoyable. He's different, and he's got a guy that's interesting as well. So it all works. Agreed. I got a, I got a question. Yeah. 
How much longer is JJ around? Won't you look it up? I'm trying. Okay. While well, you're He's doing that. He's around for a while, isn't he? Come on, Doc. Hurry up. What are you doing? After leaving WCW in February 1989. Mm. Damn. Is that fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, uh, a few more months maybe. Wow. And it goes mm. up north? Mm-hmm. Oh, just wait till we get to 89. This is going to be fun. Is it? Yeah, it will. If that's when yeah. Jesse Ventura pops up? When does Ventura pop up? Hold on. Hold on, God damn it! While you're looking that up, I will let you know that Ivan and Nikita Koloff defeat Menace 1 and Menace 2. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a promo. What? It's just funny. Yeah. Okay. Why do they look like the Russian assassin? That's what I was thinking. I don't know. The mask, red, the fucking red mask. Gear, fucking, hey, now yeah. you can't go out there and everybody on the card looking alike. You know, everybody's got the same finisher these days. Everybody looks the same. Back in my day, we all looked different. If you use everything was finisher, air, everything was airtight, brother. Assholes. <laughs> all right, Ivan and Nikita, they win. Then Ivan and Nikita, they go to a promo, and they but they before the promo, they throw out the footage of Nikita versus one of the Russian assassins. We talked about this match already uh, last week. Anyway, um, we see Ivan come out, help Nikita, and or the other way around. I can't even remember what it was. And then um, the Russians cheat, and they beat Nikita. Ivan chokes Paul Jones with the chain. And then we go to, the, to a promo, actually in the studio. I will play Ivan's part, because it is pretty damn good. Um... And uh, I'll cut off Nikita. So here we go. Here it is. Well, I have to say, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. All right, Ivan, you've heard from the National Wrestling Alliance, I think, about this game. Isn't that correct? That is right. The president of the National Alliance has just assured me that from this moment on, that the Paul Jones and his assassins will be searched. At least assassins will be searched because it's obvious that they are using a foreign object in their mask whenever they defeat their opponent. And Paul Jones, I know you got to be not only angry, because I could tell by your voice, but you are afraid. Now, because of this stipulation of being searched, Paul Jones, because everybody knows there is two kind of people in the world. And the assassins are the disgrace of the Soviet Union, and all the American people know, Paul Jones, what type of a selfish little weasel you are. A slimy, sneaky, conniving little weasel. And you're not going to get away with it, Paul Jones. As far as the chain goes, Paul George, you're so concerned about it. We don't need the chain to defeat your assassins. From this moment on, we will leave chain in dressing room unless we have a Russian chain match. But you know, Paul Jones, that the assassins will not have a chance against us. I've got a lot to prove, a lot to make up to, to my nephew, Nikita Forpass. And I'm going to do it. There's a fire that burns inside of me. And I'm going to show all of America my gratitude for the way they've accepted my nephew. And I'm going to show it at your expense, Paul Jones and the South. You talk about Russian chairman. I know what you can do in the Russian chairman. You know what I can do in the Russian chairman. But we don't know what the assassin can do in the Russian chain match, do we? Paul Jones, you see, I don't know what the assassin, what the assassin is putting up here. Get the back of my head. It's so sore from last week. I still feel what he hit me last week. So you see, when they come, Paul Jones, to a tag match between Uncle Alvin and Nikita against the Russian assassin, two against two, but Sharota, or it should be like last week, one to one. Paul Jones, your Russian assassin, and you, I will not be happy, Paul Jones, and to Uncle Ivan, either break your stinking neck, or it's a lie. Take the Paruski Sabataha, it's a lie. Take the Russian signal and break your stinking neck. Doc, you got any thoughts? Nikita is so bad that he made me forget how good 
Ivan was. Ivan was good. Ivan was real good. He right was, there. man. It, that intensity was back. He's got a feud. He thinks he can sink his teeth in. Let's get it on. And then Chitoata happens. Yeah. <laughs> then Chitoata happens. <laughs> and I think you can read into that exactly what I mean. Chitoata. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts, Doc? Um, this is one I wish they would do more with, I think, down the line. And let mm. Ivan get, let Ivan, I mean, Ivan, Ivan laid out baby face there with the whole, y'all have accepted my nephew. I mean, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, don't get too used to Ivan and Nikita as a pair right here. I know. Yeah, oh, okay. this is it, huh? <laughs> I don't, like I said, I don't ever want to get into... What's going to happen, even though this stuff's 30-plus years old? But I just don't get too used to them as a pair right there. Somebody's coming in. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Uh-oh. Took a dumb, dumb, dumb. Larry Zabisco defeats Tony Suber. Larry Zabisco is still your Western States Heritage Champion, as Harper That's loves. That's right. <laughs> Doc, any thoughts on the match? No. Hot That's stuff. Nice. Eddie. That, yeah, he's just he paused for ten seconds to say no. Hot stuff. Eddie Gilbert defeats Gary Royal. Eddie comes out to some terrible dubbed in music. I have no clue what it was, and I'm almost uh, uh, certain based on Jr's commentary and beating into our head. The reason Eddie is back is for the Mid South tour because that's all Jr keeps talking about. Uh, not Mid South tour per se, but the fact that they're going to be in the Mid South area and all that good stuff. Doc, any thoughts on Eddie Gilbert, Gary Royal? No, I do want to hear Eddie Gilbert after this. Yeah, I got it actually. Um, I got the timestamp. Let's get to it right here. Here it is. Uh, let's go to Eddie Gilbert after his match. Here it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this man, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert's on the Mid South Tour. Hot That's Stuff? Right. That's right, David Crockett. I'm on the Mid South Tour. I'm back in the National Wrestling Alliance. But there's always a reason that brings everybody back to the roots. Everybody, after last week, they were saying, What's the real reason you're back? Well, let me tell you people right now the real story. You know, I sat back, David, something that maybe you and your two cohorts, Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross, seem to mislead the people sometime when you're talking about the careers of Sting and Rick Steiner. You forget to mention that the man that put the two together, the man that pushed the two superstars to the top, is standing right here next to you, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Well, I left. I sat back. I watched a lot of things go down. And now I had to sit back there and watch Sting get mutilized and maimed by the road words. That's okay. I know the man, he'll take care of himself. That's just fine. But another matter is you, Kevin Sullivan. I've had to sit back and I watched you as you stole Steiner from Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. You took him away. Well, that's okay. I remember when Steiner started in wrestling, he came to me. He just had a pair of black boots on. Regular wrestling tights, no ring jacket. Look where he's at today, and you ask him who put him there. He's no dummy. You want to play mind game, Sullivan? I'll take Steiner back. But the last straw, David Crockett, was when I saw him take that block. And when they busted on gorgeous Jimmy's leg. Well, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin's going to be back, boys. And he knows he has one partner when he gets back. And that's hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. And we'll take on the home shopping club, David. All right, very okay. good. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Listen, more action to come. Lex Luger. All right, Doc, you wanted me to play it? What you got? I thought he was good because he really put some history in there. It's like I had Steiner first. I put him together. He's not stupid. And by saying that, it's like, so what is Sullivan doing to him? That that created some interest for me there. That's I true, agree. huh? I agree. And the 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 kind of history lesson about Sting and Steiner during the UWF day, I mean, like, that's, like, real. That's valid. It is. Mm-hmm. It's a fact, so I I really enjoyed that part of it. So yeah, Hopper, you got any thoughts? When's he married, Missy Hyatt? I don't know. I don't remember. But whenever he wants, whenever John Tatum's done with her. Oh They're, come, come on. on! That that's come on. What? 
This is why people like da- like Harper's friend Darren don't listen to us. Yeah. Grow up. We got some you- straight talk with Magnum, uh, Magnum TA. Nobody gives a shit about that. People that want to... People want to hear hear us talk about perforated hymens and that kind of thing. Dude, you called Dusty's head a beat up ham wallet. What, where was I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> now, when I called well, something a ham wallet a few weeks back or months ago, you got well, on my when, case. But it's okay for you to use please, it. Please, please detect the lies. Ham wallet. That's ham fucked wallet. up. Yeah, ham wallet. <laughs> oh, it's like a beat up fucking roast beef sandwich. Look at that. <laughs> Grow up. Twelve. You know, fucking ten. Yep. Whoa, William Bozard out there has got the meme made up for me in the spa- in the in the Facebook group. He he tweets it or he puts it out there a hundred times a day. Grow up. It's great. I love it. Thank you, William. I appreciate your contributions to the Facebook group. Oh, goodness gracious. Good stuff. Oh, oh, hold on. Before I forget, as I'm thinking about the Facebook group, since uh, since uh, I seem to be on Steven Javorski's bad side, he's a little upset with me right now. So everybody out there, you know, we cover old school NWA with Saturday night, right? Well, one of the things that Steven Javorski does every single week and Jose Corona out there, both of them patrons have done every single week, become a patron at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Get access to a bunch of other shows. Great, great, great things you can get with our Patreon uh, membership. But anyway, uh, Javorski every single week posts the NWA power thread uh, to, to do like a live watch along to. And uh, he got on me the other day on the Facebook group because he's like, you know, if I had a podcast and I, they were doing it on my page all the time and the watch along, I would plug it on the show. So, um, Javorski, there it is. I want to thank you for your contributions uh, to the group in posting the NWA live power thread every single week. So you and the rest of the guys can do the watch along. Uh, it's actually very, very popular. So uh, if you're not in our Facebook group, go join it. Just don't get offended. If you're going to be offended by stuff, don't join the group. Uh, if you're not going to be offended, go join it. And uh, do the NWA power thing with, with the Javorski and the crew. So I wanted to mention that. Now, Javorski, I'm going to shout you out, but I'm not going to crank you off. So we're going to leave it at hey, that. Whoa. Hey. Come on. What? Why Why did it have to go that far? Well, I mean, yeah. I know he likes, you know, he's, he, he's, he likes got, he's got Hopper's pictures of Hopper up on the wall of him and his wife's bedroom. And, you know, every now and then he cranks well, one off. So well, maybe that's his, maybe that's his wife's call, not his. I'm kind of a big deal that's in right. Pittsburgh. I mean, Harper called a guy jumping off of a fucking shopping mall. Well, that's that's kind of true. Uh, and this is the point where we ran off Harper's friend Darren again. So I just wanted to mention yeah. that as you know, as we I'm talk big about uh, Steel Town. Yeah, you know. So uh, Javorski, there you go, and thank you very much. Uh, you know, mess- you know what's I'm big in Steel, Steel Town? Oh Jesus, the Steelers, <laughs> Mesothelium. <laughs> <laughs> what are you twelve? Grow up. That's no, twelve girls don't. Twelve shit. girls can't say words like that. I can't so cool. say that. Right? What, what'd you say? Harper can't even say the holiday. Uh, Harper can't even say the holiday that's this Friday. <laughs> sure What's this Friday? Valentine's Day. Ho- <laughs> what? Valentine's Day. <laughs> Doc, you are a dirty bastard, Doc. Are y'all ready? Why does that make me a dirty bastard? Because you do it. You do that to Harper every year. He's got 365 days to clean up his act. Valentine's Day. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He can't do it. He can't do it. I bet if you put a revolver up to his temple, he couldn't do it. That's like I say, uh, ambulance. And I'm like, what? An ambulance. (laughs) <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's an ambulance but Harper calls it an ambulance <laughs> this is why Darren doesn't listen to us fuck Darren <laughs> Darren won himself a mention on the show for being Harper's friend and giving Harper a hard time oh, all right Let's go to straight talk with the boss. We got, uh, actually, do you have anything from this doc? I thought it was really good. I thought it was pretty good too. 
Yeah, me too. Here it is. Let's listen to Lex. He's out there with uh, Magnum. He's going to cut a promo against uh, on the Road Warriors. Here it is. What it makes you have that rotten feeling deep down in your guts. Two of the strongest men in professional wrestling doubling up on their partner, Sting, a man that's come a long way here in the NWA, possibly injuring him and putting him out. Who knows what it's going to do to his career. But how do you answer this to the fans? They've been looking up to the most powerful team in the world of professional wrestling, the Road Warriors, for so long. And they've had their sights set on the world tag team titles. How do you rationalize their thinking on a situation like this? I can't rationalize it. I can't justify it. But I have a man standing here beside me that was right there, right in the thick of things. And he felt that big forearm clothesline, a road warrior animal. And I know he's got a few thoughts about this. Lex Luger, what do you think? You know, Magnum, excuse me if I go off a little bit here. But, you know, we've always known where you stood. Everyone's known where Sting has stood as a wrestler and as a man. And we all thought, fans included you, me, and Sting, where the Road Warriors stood as competitors and athletes. They talk street, but they always wrestle by the rules, and they're always men of their word. So we thought. Now, if you think for one second that Sting's going to be laying out somewhere, licking his wounds, you got Sting figured all wrong. If you think the total package Lex Luger is going to sit back and let something like this go unanswered, you got another thing coming. Because the Road Warriors, you've always had a reputation of being the biggest, baddest, toughest apples, whether it's the fans or whether it's the athletes, the wrestlers themselves. But I've been in the ring with you against you. I've been there with you. And you aren't that special. Because the Stinger and myself will take care of business. And if you want a change in attitude, if you want a new reputation, you just picked the wrong two wrestlers to make it on. That's right, they did. You know, the Road Warriors, you're not. All right, Doc, I thought Luger was really good there. What did you think? I thought Luger was really good as well when he said, you talk street, but you always wrestle by the rules. I thought that was a really good line. I think it's funny that he's putting himself and Sting over and not really mentioning Dusty. Mm, that's yeah, that's true, huh? He didn't bring up Dusty. Man, back in the old days, nobody could breathe without bringing up Dusty. He didn't really mention him. That's a good point. I didn't think about it, but yeah, you, you're on to something with that one. Yeah. You didn't mention Dusty at all. Mm. That's fucked up. It is. Big, it is. fat, well. God, that kid or person just... Whoa, that was pretty intense <laughs> on Dusty. All right, uh, Hopper, you got any thoughts on Luger right there? I mean, Luger just keeps getting better and better, huh? I mean, now he's like he's he's like a dog to where you can now take him off the leech in the front yard and he's not going to run off. <laughs> you know? It's a great analogy, yes. That's a good one. That's how far he's come. He's a broad that you can leave your credit card unattended around the house with. Yeah. And you, you, you're not going to get those fucking notifications from the bank. Ding, ding, ding. Thank God I don't have that problem. That's a doc problem, not my, not a mic. All right. All right. Look how high David Crockett looks right there in that still Damn, shot that yeah, I froze. Look at him. He's like, Bro. I'm selling this shit. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a I, fuck what happens I took my proceeds from the sale And bought an eight ball <laughs> Dude He looks like he Smoked a pound of the World's finest right there Ted he, Turner got Ted Turner's money got me this cush Hell yeah bitch. Look at it Look at his face <laughs> Do we need to hear from the Road Warriors? Uh, I think we do, don't we? Yeah, we we got to find out, you know, what the fuck's their problem. I gotta what is snip, their problem? I got to snip David Crockett's face, though, first. Hold on. All <laughs> right, there it is. That's, that's not even high. Harper, that's the look when you're taking a real satisfying big-ass shit. And, and no one's home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the home. door open. You got the door open. 
You got you've waited, the fucking you've waited, just the, you've waited just the right time to where it's right there ready, but it's not oh, an yeah. emergency. It's all solid, so it's not like a a problem. Yeah. It, it's just that's the look when you're in the middle of it. You got the Bluetooth speaker on in a bathroom, you listen to some podcast or something, you just like, uh, here we go. Yep. Uh, that's the life. <laughs> the log just slides out. That big old garfish just sitting in the fucking toilet. <laughs> what are you, 12? <laughs> Darren just it, turned us off, and again. then you sit there, and then you sit there so long listening to the podcast, proud of yourself that your feet start to go to sleep. Don't you hate that? The ass hurts, your ass <laughs> falls asleep. Hopper, I don't think Doc's ever had this problem, but I know you and I have both had this problem before. So I'm gonna right. say it. You know how, like, when you ain't worked out a while and you train legs and you hit them it real is. heavy. Yeah, you can't <laughs> fucking you, walk around. And you go to take a dump, and you try to st- you try yeah, to stand like you try to stand up after dropping that long ass garfish <sighs> in the toilet, and you you're like, oh my god, every fiber in your muscles hurts. Yeah. Why'd you say then, I don't have that? Because you ain't never squatted or leg pressed in your life. You know why? Uh, you, you know, you see, no, 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 no. I don't care. The fact Podcast- is, you've never done it. Podcasting is an upper body business, pal. Mm. Uh, well, maybe you ought to develop that brain of yours a little bit better. Can we hear from the Road Warriors, please? We can, we can, because I know we're starting to go <laughs> late into your night. Here it is. That's right, they did. You know, the Road Warriors, they're not that tough. Because think about it. Come Sting on. And Lex Luger, they were the winners in the Crockett Cup. Now, you have to be tough to do that. Hey, listen, after we come back, Tony will be here with the Road Warriors, and we'll find out exactly why they did it to Sting and Lex Luger right after this. Oh, shit. I thought it was was right there, Doc. There it is. Let's go to it now. Hey, we wouldn't have got that gold from Crockett looking like he was high. Here we go. There's no doubt we need to find out exactly what happened here tonight. And, you know, certainly one of the most gut-wrenching things I've ever seen in professional wrestling with these two men, the Road Warriors and Paul Ellering. Let me tell you something, Tony Schiavone. We just proved our point. We had the first club right where the hell we wanted them. And Steve came in where his business didn't belong. Now we're tired of carrying people. We're tired of carrying Dusty Rhodes. We carried them long enough. We're tired of being the guys that get the new guy come in. We'll tag him up with the Road Warriors. Make him be something. We've had it. I need him. He needs me. And we need our manager. And that's it. We've had him with everybody else. Now, wait, wait just one second. Can I say something right here, if it's okay, if you don't mind? Speak your peace. You smart off to me. You'll end up just like Sting. Now, what do you want to ask I'm me? I'm not going to smart off to you, but well, have, have, have you thought about all the repercussions? Not, repercussions. Not only, not only did you take out, we don't know how, how badly he's injured right now, but not only did they take out a man that's a very popular athlete, one of the most in the sport of professional wrestling, <laughs> but what about when you go to the arena all the time and you see these thousands upon thousands of kids dressed up, painted up like the Road Warriors? Did you ever think about hey, that? Well, how you've let fire. them down? It let them down. Let them down. I didn't let nobody down. He didn't let nobody down. We did what we're best at, and that's busting face. If it's Sting, if it's anybody, he was in there trying to make us look bad. We don't need any of that. We're tired of carrying people. We're tired of making everybody else look good at our cost. Well, now it's just us, the way it used to be. The three of us, forget about the rest, because we don't need them, and we never did. Fans, from the... Giovanni. Ellering's good here. Listen. It all started because of Dusty Rhodes. If he would have been here tonight and stead off at some Nandy Pamby charity for some special kids of his, if he would have been here wrestling tonight, this wouldn't have happened to that kid. That kid Sting. He's a nice kid, but we never liked him. We never liked him anyway. You got to understand that, Tony. You're a nice kid, Sting. You just got in the way. Dusty Rhodes, this is your fault. You should have been there tonight, not at some charity. Take the money that you win and give it to the kids. But don't take our time or our money because that's what you did. You took the money out of our pocket. Take the money out of your own pocket and give it to them kids. But not our money and not our time. 
That's it, fans, from obviously one of the most disgusting scenes that I've ever seen. All right, Doc, you wanted to hear it. That was great. What you got? I didn't really like Ellering. And I did. Harper, did you think he said Nambla Pambi Charity? I don't know what he said. Oh. No, no, no you think he said like a... I, no, that's not okay. what he said. Okay. I thought Hawk was awesome when he told Shivani he, <laughs> repercussions and like, boy, let's start off on the right foot here. You're going to get your ass kicked. Um, I don't know why, but something's missing about this explanation for me. They're tired of carrying people. Okay, what's that mean? It means they're tired of carrying people. Why you got to make this so goddamn difficult? I'm listening. Hello? Okay. Somebody must have run in the room. Hopper, you there? Yeah. I thought it made perfect sense. He's tired of it. They don't need... They've never needed anyone else. They're bad enough on their own. They're tired of dragging Dusty's big fat butt across the finish line. That's nice. So they're dragging him along, and they're just going to keep dragging him along. So they said, no, we're not going to do that no more. Hawk was perfect. He said, we didn't let no one down. We did what was best for us, and we're going to do what's best for us, and that's beat people up. We're that's tired right. of making others look good. Forget about the rest. It's just us. I mean, Ellering blamed, about right. Ellering blamed it on Dusty and says, you know what? He shouldn't have been out there catering to some special kids. This might not have happened. I thought it was perfect. Doc, are you there or what's going on? So were they special kids or were they special kids? They were special kids like Don't. the X-Men. <sighs> Grow up. How'd you, how'd you like Dusty using the R word during his promo? I I mean that was 1988, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can't hold it. You can't hold him to 2020 standards. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you on the you on the other hand were, have been flashing all kinds of shit all night that needs it's going to go on your file, Harper. What? Well, you use the R word when and you use the A word wrongly. Ass? No. Which one? The geographic part of the world where you said somebody you you put the the wrong the wrong stress on the wrong vowel. A rap. Right. <laughs> See, that's it. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Shout out time. to Robert Silver who said one time on Twitter, Harper's got to be a brother because that's how brothers say it. <laughs> 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 and then I'm sure you're ready to say, do you say, what's the country where the coronavirus is? In China, right? Yeah, and then if if a person is a man in that country, do you call them that altogether? A, a Chinaman? Nah. Yeah, okay. He's just Asian. Okay, that's good. That's good. See, the, the last... The last module of BTT sensitivity training must have worked. <laughs> no, here's the thing. I like, I prefer intense, everybody's on the edge of getting their ass with Road Warriors. So I'm a fan of the turn. I'm a fan of Hawk being able to lean into his persona. I thought Animal was good. Good stuff. Thank you. Ellery wasn't that good for me, but that's okay. That's my own thing with him. I thought it was one of his best. No doubt in my mind. All right. Before we before we go off air, uh, we got a couple of more things. We got J.J. Dillon. Uh, he doesn't say much, so I didn't, oh. I didn't have it queued up to play. Did you think, Doc, he had anything? Nothing. And then Mike Rotunda defeats Eddie Sweat. But we got one other thing we got to get to before we go to the close of the show, and that is the Varsity Club. We got Steiner, Sullivan, and Rotunda, and poor Rick Steiner. Let's hear what's going to go down right here, though. Well, Rotunda got the victory, Tony, but Steiner's getting all the glory here, and I think it's long overdue. Let's go to David at our podium. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the varsity club with Kevin Sullivan. Hey, I like that cheering, yeah, Steiner. I like it. thinks a lot of things of you. Well, let me tell you what. A lot of heavy things have gone down. 
It ain't just so funny for Sting. It ain't so funny for Lex Luger. And it could be real dangerous for some other people. Let me wait. A big announcement. Mike Rotunda and myself have decided on a new member of the Varsity Club. Surprise! Well, 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 I got some good ideas. Why are you ask me? You're a moron, well, Steiner. We're going to drop a bombshell. Great ideas. What? I have some good ideas. How come you didn't find me? You have no brain. brain. Hey. You're a moron. Oh, Face no. it. Stop it. Listen. We Please have decided... Something's going to hurt you. We have decided that we have taken a new member. It's the biggest bombshell of the wrestling world this year. And a lot of things have happened. <laughs> and the other thing is, right now, we're claiming the six-man world win. tag team championships. You see, if... Listen to him cry. Dusty Rhodes has always been involved in problems. Well, Dusty Rhodes, you weren't there. So we're taking it upon ourselves. We had the Road Warriors beat. We are the world. Hey, hey. What? What? We, we should get that. Sting. Hey. What? We should get Sting by our partner because he had you beat. And you Wait, really you about me. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What? Come here. Come here. Come here. What? First of all, first of all, listen to me. First of all, listen to me. Listen. First of all. I want the people to know the Varsity Club. Everything's right. And you're wrong. Everything's what? You're stupid. Can you hear? Can you hear? Hey, you got some, you your hey, you got some extra all, money. I, I got to send Sting some flowers. You what? I got to send Sting some I want flowers. You, I want you to leave right now. Just leave. Go. Just go. Just go. Here, leave. 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 Go. Go get some popcorn. He's, 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 nice nice he's not a nice guy, David. He's a trained, fantastic wrestler. But sometimes he gets off the track. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from the varsity club. We'll have more next week. We'll see you. Man, they treating Steiner bad, Doc. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. but they've turned him babyface. Yeah. Y and he also became a special person. This shit's, this shit's entertaining, though, because he was behind Rotunda, and Rotunda's telling him he's a moron. This is good <laughs> stuff. You want to you wanna look up in a textbook uh, one way to turn somebody babyface? That was there it. You know. Yeah. The, the sympathy that this man has... Uh -huh. And empathy that, that these people have. I mean, they were chanting his name like he <laughs> he is one of the biggest baby faces of the territory. I thought this was great. I really have forgotten how good this got when Steiner starts getting abused. Me shout too. Out to, shout out to Jeff Jewett out there because he told me this a few months ago. And he's a patron. And he was like, uh, he's like, uh, remember when Steiner? And I was like, yeah, that's true. But I didn't remember it being this good right before he gets mm -hmm. the boot. This is some good me stuff, either. man. Me either. This has been real good. Yeah. The, the varsity, think about this. You know, we, we talk about a lot of stuff, but you think about 1988 and you think about the varsity club, man, they were much hotter than I think people want to give them credit for. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is good stuff. Uh, Harper, you got any thoughts on this? I mean, it's just when he, like, wait for, look at him. <laughs> Fucking goofball. <laughs> I thought he was going to pluck him in the ear at one point. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know how he used to do, do that on a cold day on a schoolyard, Harper? One of, the, yeah. one of the kids get behind you and pluck your ear, and then, you, then it turned into a fight. I, that's what I was waiting for right there. I was like, okay. Dog face gremlin. Now he's dumb. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. All right. So that's how they go off air, which I thought was a great way to go off air. So with that said, we need to rate this thing and do some Rolexes. Uh, before we do that, remember, if you're not a patron, become one at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. That's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. It's a great way to support this show. Uh, you get tons of extra content. Over 200 plus Patreon exclusive episodes are up right now on our Patreon feed. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Uh, Doc, um, let's go to you first because I know you got to run in a minute. Uh, I'll let you choose. You want to do the Rolex or you want to do the uh, Raiden first? I'm going to give this one um, no Rick, no Arn. Hmm. But this an hour long. Is an hour, 71 minutes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give him wallet on his head. Come on. Okay. I'm going to give this a B. Plus. Okay. I'm gonna go A. I'm gonna go A minus. Uh, what are you giving Hopper? 
I'll give it a B plus. All right, B plus. All right, Doc. Uh, who who you give your Rolex to? I think that this is going to surprise some people. Okay. But I never let it be said that I don't call this thing straight down the middle like it is. I'm going to give my Rolex to Lex Luger. Oh, wow. That's a shocker. That promo was good, man. And he did what he needed to do as the guy challenging for the main strap, the top baby face. That was the promo he needed to deliver because he stepped in and he he said, all right, now me and Sting are going to, you, you don't want any of this. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to go a different direction. I'm going to go with the Road Warriors. I know that may seem obvious, but I just thought their explanation for why they did what they did was great. So I'm going Road Warriors. Uh, Harper, who are you giving yours to? I guess the Road Warriors. I like fucking Rick. Uh, Rick Steiner was funny there. I almost gave it to him. Yeah. It's like he's not acting. No, he's <laughs> the whole thing is so organic looking and like yeah. it's real. And you're right. It's like he's not acting. He's just a goofball and they're treating him bad. And I got to tell you, the goofball, it gets, believe it or not, the, the goofball persona gets turned up another notch too from this it's it gets when much scott worse show up? i don't remember when scott shows up but we're a ways away from that but yeah. uh you know we got changes with the varsity club coming too mm-hmm. they're 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 upon us so all right one other thing for i throw it to hopper for some closing things on this week's episode yeah uh, hold on brian what what you got i just want to tell everybody to have a sweet little week out there i gotta go but um oh. it's been a ple- it's been a pleasure it's been a blessing and uh and uh, go bust some guts out this week. It's going to be uh, between now and the next show. Um, you're going to have had hol- uh, Valentine's Day, and hopefully you uh, you got you poked her a hole in her uterus. You know That's what I mean? Nice. It's nice. All right. So catch you later, Doc, or tomorrow. Yeah, buddy. You know drill. All right. So before we get out of here, reminder: if you don't use it, please use our Amazon referral link. It's tinyurl.com/bttamazon. A great way to support this show without spending anything extra. So if you're already shopping on Amazon, please use that link every time you go on Amazon. Again, it's tinyurl.com/bttamazon. Give that link to the wives, girlfriends, hoes, and side pieces in your life, and tell them to use it. Every time you or they use Amazon, uh, we'd appreciate it very much. Okay, Hopper, um, you got anything? Any Wildcat news? Anything we need to know about besides Perry flying off the balcony? Anything else we need to know Wildcat related? No. No? The next show has not been announced yet at this time. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm shocked. Well, I'm actually not shocked. Why? Uh, no, it, it's, um, it's February, so. I'm pretty sure when I know the next one is going to be or a roundabout date. And then I know, uh, I know as soon as we have any word about X rated, we're definitely going to fill in the people on that one. Cause everybody. Okay. Asking, so, uh, but yeah, no. So, all right. Uh, show was good though. This, uh, this past weekend. Uh, yeah. I, I know you, you, I mean, I was worried that, about the crowd, but I mean, they showed up. Uh, I know you, you had mentioned that how like the crowd was, you were like, man, the crowd's not, you know, we were worried about the, the mall crowd, because you know how it is. You just never know. Yeah. And sure enough, they man, showed the, up. they showed up, and the people in the mall stopped and were watching, and it was good stuff. Yeah. Thankfully, Perry fun. didn't kill himself. <laughs> I never thought I'll use a vacant express for a locker room. A vacant express. I know uh, that 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 one that one in itself is uh, pretty amazing. The fact that you use an express. Yeah, because so. I, I never been. In one of those stores, and when you go in the back of them, you're like, "Whoa, oh, this is what's all back here." In these fucking mall stores, you've never done that. They got like a locker room back there. They got they they had lockers. Yeah, yeah, they had all kinds of shit back there. <laughs> yeah, man, it's pretty amazing. I've I've worked in retail, not a lot, and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I guess you're right. If you've never been back there to see like yeah. the storage of them all, it's kind of. It's kind of different uh so yeah all right man so uh if you ain't got nothing else um i don't think i've got anything else i think we're just about done go to our pro wrestling t store 
Um, I haven't plugged that in a while, so go check it out. Just go to ProWrestlingTees.com, and then if you just go to the podcast and YouTube channel section, you can get to our Book in the Territory page. Harper's got shirts there. I've got shirts there. we got the show shirts there. Uh, please check them out if you haven't done so in a while. I haven't mentioned it in probably a year, but there you go. I wanted to mention our Pro Wrestling Tees store. Uh, it's still there, and plenty of shirts are available. I think we got nine designs up now. Okay, that's all I got. Harper, uh, do us the honor of hitting your tagline, your now famous tagline, and get us home. Book it, bitch. Everybody, before we get out of here, you know I always got to thank all of our patrons out there. Thank you for supporting this show. Thank you for all that you do for the show. Your patronage is very appreciated. It makes what we do right now twice per week, every single week on the free feed possible. So thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Also, man, I got to tell you guys, the Hall of Fame patron shout-out list continues to grow larger and larger and i am grateful for that so thank you very much for all the hall of fame patrons out there i mean thank you to all the patrons i mean i understand certain people uh can't pledge as much as others and that's fine and that's why you know at the two dollar level you get a bunch of stuff but for the hall of fame uh hall of fame patrons out there thank you very much this list is growing longer and longer each and every week so i don't know how much longer i'm going to be able to do the uh list of hall of fame hall of fame patron shout out so my apologies if this uh doesn't continue in the future however we're going to give it one more try at the beginning of February right here of 2020 with all of our Hall of Fame patrons. So as I say that, I want to give some shout outs to those Hall of Fame patrons. My friend out there, Fritz Von Malky, thank you very much. You signed up uh, to the Hall of Fame level. You've been signed up for a while. You bumped up, I should say. So thank you, uh, Fritz Von Malky, a.k.a. Doc. Actually, they're not the same person. It's just a running joke. So there you have it. Uh, Rowan Smith, David Ford, Harrison Lee, Isaac Pinley, at Hey Hey It's Isaac. Oh, I'm sorry, at Hey It's Isaac, not Hey Hey It's Isaac. It's just at Oh Hey It's Isaac. Eagle underscore one, Kango Fett, Lee Russell, MDQ for life, George Davis, Kevin Carter, Michael Angel, Bob Richards, Rocky Suazo, my man Christopher Champer, Will Harkey, Robbie Dyson, Rick Beebe, Brad Duneifen, Tom Schlegel, Coach Joey Chase, a.k.a. Willie Chase, Steve Malbasa, Kenny Byersdorf, Glenn Abbott, at GA Russell Nut on Twitter, Bobby Murray, Marlon Mueller, my man Marlon Mueller, a.k.a. Half Pints Point. You know what I always say, keep cutting those promos, kid. Josh Warren, Everett Starr, Mike Childry, Kyle Riley, Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Craig Norman, Johnny on Patreon, the great John Dean, who is at YRC21 on Twitter, Josh Dunn at Ryan and Auburn on Twitter, good old Justin Robert Smith, Joseph Ice, Tim Morecci, Adam Price, Brian Evans, Mark Wilson, Armando Martinez, David Jordan, Jesse Jacobs, Chris Myers, Gerald Green III, Mitchell Johnson, Mike Pru, Will Parker, Classy Alex, David DeVries, SV Pageant, Bill Salsa, Big Rich, Allen, at Spy Boy Sports Cap, R.E. Miller 39, Jay Shiny, Ruben Espinosa, Merciless Jones, Jesse Lucas, Chris Browning, Justin underscore Andretti, Cole Manny 22, Marty Howell, T Hog 94, Gobbled Unreal. Thank you for your generous patronage via the Hall of Fame patron sign up. Last but not least, I uh, just want to give you all a, a heads up on something. I have not been as active lately on either Twitter or Facebook. Um, the shoot job, just very, very busy. And I just haven't had a lot of time. So uh, if you've sent me DMs on Twitter 
or instant messages or messages on Facebook Messenger and I have not gotten back to you, I just cannot get through them. So um, honestly, probably from here on out, the best way to get in touch with me if you really, really need to get in touch with me is going to be via email for the show, bookingtheterritory at gmail.com. So I just want to mention that I am recording this actual segment on February 5th, 2020, but I wanted to say that if you need to get in touch with me, uh, and I haven't responded to your DM on either Twitter or on Facebook. The best way would probably be email. I tend to check that a few times a day when I can. Um, and if I don't even check it during the day, I usually check it at night. So that's probably the best place to get in touch with me if you need to get in touch with me. With something show related, Patreon related, especially if it's Patreon related, give me a holler there. I mean, it's it's not that... Uh, Again, that's, a, that's the best way to reach me um, to the Gmail. Book in the territory at gmail.com if you're not getting a response on Twitter or on Facebook. And um, I want to shout out Mike Crockett as well for handling the Facebook page and helping me moderate with it. Uh, he does a good job. Don't give him a hard time if he doesn't catch things and whatnot. So anyway, and stop getting offended at everything, people. We only live once. Live, love, and laugh, brothers and sisters out there, and just have a good time. That said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm eternally grateful for all of you guys and women. we got a lot of women now who support this show. Thank you very much. Uh, it means a lot. And uh, when we started this nearly five years ago, I didn't think we'd grow like this, but we have. And it's because of you. So thank you. Uh, this is Mike. I'm getting out of here. You know what Hopper always says. Book it, bitch.